The representation of women across mediums has developed massively with the second wave feminist movement and the theoretical developments that were absorbed into the beginning of feminist film theory. From films such as Psycho with a visually appealing female at the forefront to action films such as The Hunger Games or rom-coms like Trainwreck. The Hunger Games portrays equal opportunities for women as well as political equality. Katniss's traits and skills are particularly masculine, with her strength and athleticism conquering that of men. As Judith Halberstam mentions, female masculinity actually affords us a glimpse of how masculinity is constructed. Katniss's biggest opponent is President Snow, a strong male character who holds power and authority over thousands. Katniss still conquers him. In typical Hollywood films, strong women are depicted as predatory femme fatales, conquering men with a seductive, saucy diction and alluring sexual gestures. Opposing this is the character of Katniss. The social castration of Katniss entering the games prompts a shift in her personality and shows why The Hunger Games' Katniss Everdeen is a role model for our times and why it was such a success across multiple media platforms. One could argue that the video game industry is much in need of a role model like Katniss Everdeen. The video game industry as we know it today has grown to be notorious for its sexist nature and male-driven narratives. Women, according to most video games, are one of two things, a sex object or non-existent. Video games started with innocent games like Pong, though as it became clear that their audience was male, the games being made progressively became more misogynistic. Women existed merely to be saved, trophy. Then, as years went by and games consoles became infinitely more advanced, we saw women grow to be sexualized. However, despite this, games like Portal and The Last of Us, which we see dominating the industry, make women exist as more than sex objects. We're finally seeing them dressed appropriately for an apocalypse, and more than that, we're seeing them kick ass. Don't get me wrong, women are allowed to be sexy in games, it's not black and white. To suggest that sexual women cannot exist in games is to do an injustice to both men and women. Sexy women in games would be great if they weren't the only way women exist in games. And that's the main issue. There's no variety. Although we're coming to a point in society where we see more women in games, they're often still sexualized, which completely diminishes the triumph of their ability. This is similar to female artists in music videos. Many music videos rely on sexuality to become popular in today's culture. Women take advantage of the notion that sex sells in order to gain popularity. Though there is debate over whether women are being taken advantage of and objectifying themselves while doing this, or whether they're reclaiming their sexuality and empowering themselves through this. Take Anaconda by Nicki Minaj, for example. The music video consists of half-naked women booty shaking and cutting phallic-shaped food objects in half. Many people feel that this sort of empowerment can contribute to rape culture. A study was done in which college students watched a video of women sexually teasing a man, just like in Nicki Minaj's video. From the video, they concluded that the woman was responsible for any sexual aggression that was aimed at her, and that she must be doing something to deserve this treatment. On the other end of the spectrum, Reguerre conducted a study in which he found that women who objectify, in other words, empower themselves, all had a much higher sexual self-esteem. And really, who could that hurt? There is a similar controversy in comic books, with female characters being sexualized and whether or not it's empowering or objectifying. Female characters, both villains and heroines, are almost exclusively shown with skin-tight costumes and unrealistic anatomy. Me, from gravity defying breasts to impossible poses that require either no spine or a couple of ribs removed. To combat this, comic book fans have created the Hawkeye Initiative, in which they take the ridiculous poses and costumes of female characters and transpose them onto men to emphasize their absurdity. The reason that they appear so absurd is that male characters are seen as the norm, with the majority of comic books predominantly featuring male heroes. This being because comics are overwhelmingly written by men, and it's clear that these writers believe that they are appealing to men first, with female audiences coming in bonus instead of a key part of their audience to be addressed. This is seen in how women are used in comics when they are included, either as a sexy sidekick, as a villain, and especially as the lone female in a large male ensemble. This trope, coined as the Smurfette Principle by Katha Pollitt in 91, is where in order to seem as if they are being inclusive, writers will introduce one lone female into a larger group of male characters, often as a love interest or a damsel in distress. This is seen across mediums with the representation of women being distinctly more sexualized than their male counterparts. 